<laughs> okay. I want to call this meeting to order for the Black Hawk County Board of Supervisors for January 31st, 2023. Roll call, please, Mr. Veter. Hall. Here. Little. Here. Schwartz. Here. Jelka. Here. Leland. Here. Thank you. Would everyone please join us in a moment of silence today to reflect on our actions? Thank you. Please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I, pledge I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Item one is the agenda received as proposed or as amended. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. There are no questions or discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The agenda is received. Public comments. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak on anything that is not on today's agenda? Seeing none, is there anyone on Zoom? Okay, we'll move on to item three, claims and payments. This is a resolution that the Board of Supervisors approve expenditures and the County Auditor be authorized and directed to issue checks against the various settlements of such claims. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Ms. Wiedner. Good morning, Board. Good morning. Um, our total bill payment today is $229,429.70. And most things we're paying are routine. Um, we are really everything except a $21,000 HVAC repair at Pinecrest is the only significant thing today, and that's only $21,000. Um, we also made payments from the 6040 fund totaling $3,419.62. Everything appears to be in order. Thank you. Well, it's been already motioned and seconded. This is a resolution, so please answer as your name is called. Paul? Yes. Little? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Trelka? Yes. Leland? Yes. Item four, presentation from Northeast Iowa Food Bank, Barb Prather, Executive Director. Good morning. Good morning. Um, thank you uh, for having me today, and I really appreciate giving this updated since we do get county funding. Um, the mission of the Northeast <coughs> Iowa Food Bank is to provide nutritious food and grocery products to nonprofit organizations and individuals in Northeast Iowa while offering hunger education to the community and those in need. Um, and we do that in a variety of ways. Um, our 10 year focus is to ensure that we have every meal every day for Northeast Iowans and that we collaborate, educate, and advocate for food insecure people. Um, needless to say, since last April, the numbers at the Northeast Iowa Food Bank's food pantry, which you fund, have gone up tremendously because the disaster proclamation ended. Um, if I compare first quarter of 2020 to first quarter of 23, um, those numbers are up about 60%, meaning in the first quarter of 2020, we were serving about um, 2,500 households a month. Now we are, in the first quarter of 23, we served about 4,100 clients a month, and families, that is, households. Um, year on year, the numbers are up about 25%. Um, as government programs decline, our need goes up. Couple that with inflation, um, as I've said, um, that th those dollars not only <clears throat> hurt um, the clients that we serve and the families that we serve, but they also hurt the food bank because we're paying 25% more in the cost of things re specifically related to food, but also um, our costs for staffing and our costs for um, fuel and transportation have also gone up. Um, your money does help us um, make ends meet um, and helps us ensure that people in Blackhawk County are food in who are food insecure have access to it. Um, last November, we were able to do our annual holiday distribution, um, and at that distribution, we served about 3,900 families right here in Blackhawk County as well as Waverly, um, Bremer and Butler County. Um, so it was a collaboration with the community um, for two and a half days, um, which we really appreciate the support that you give us uh, to that. 
Um, and finally, I just want to note, um, currently in the Iowa State Legislature, House File 3 um, has been um, proposed that would cut SNAP benefits, meaning um, that if you had any type of asset, you would not qualify if um, you currently, and they're telling us it's going to be taken out, they want SNAP to look more like WIC where you get a coupon for certain food items. Um, they've told us that's been taken out, but the amendment for that has not happened. There also has not been a fiscal note on that. My fear if, if House File 3 is enacted, um, that we will see our numbers go up even higher, um, not only here in Blackhawk County, but throughout our surrounding areas, increasing demand and driving more people into food insecurity. Um, I want to share with you a story um, in closing about somebody who uses the Cedar Valley Food Pantry, which is the program that you fund. Um, a single mother shared her story about following receiving food through the pantry. As a single mom who is disabled and living on disability, the Cedar Valley Food Pantry helps me feed my children healthy, nutritious food um, we may not have otherwise had. The Cedar Valley Food Pantry works to help those in need in their time live a healthier lifestyle, and I'm really proud of the fact the team has um, really embraced healthy food, um, and we've been able to provide, because of a lot of partnerships with local food produ producers, as well as Hanson's Dairy, as well as um, our Feeding America partners, to provide much more healthier food um, to the community, which is often the most expensive for people um, to purchase. Um, I don't know what your budgeting process is going to be this year. Um, there's a couple options I'd like to discuss with you, but I know if this house bill is enacted, the numbers are going to go up, and we're already seeing an increase. So any support that the county supervisors can and the county budget can support the food bank um, and the Cedar Valley Food Pantry, we would appreciate. I will take any questions. I want to thank you for, for raising House File 3 and just everything that you do day to day and all of your staff does. Um, it seems, House File 3 seems just downright mean spirited and cruel. Um, I believe there, just for the public information, some of the things in there are um, no fresh meats, only canned meats mm -hmm. like, like tuna. I mean, I don't know how many of you want to go home and eat canned salmon tonight. I know I don't. Um, things like no sliced cheese mm -hmm. and no cube cheese. Um, just Just really ridiculous stuff that is just trying to feed into this narrative that um, these people are lazy or some you know nonsense like that when it's just not the truth. These are these are the working poor um, for for the most part. I know that you saw you know people coming into the food bank um, that used to only come in to volunteer and now using the services. So, and I believe I saw that you've got an opinion piece coming out in the Courier yep, this weekend? Yep, so. there is an opinion piece coming out. Um, we did release a statement. It's on our website <coughs> in regards to House File 3. Um, we, Like I said, we've been told that that will be amended out, the WIC piece, and only buying certain things. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't seen the amendment to that, though. The thing that really has me concerned is the asset limit. Currently, we have no asset limits. So that means if you own a car that's decent that can get you to work, you won't even qualify for SNAP. If you own a house and have limited income, you won't even qualify for SNAP. And people are still going to need help, and so they're going to come back to the community and ask the community right. to support it. So um, I just encourage anybody to reach out to their elected officials and strongly oppose the legislation. We're for compromise, um, but right now there's not a lot to compromise. Mm -hmm. I think was the asset limit around 3500 uh, I think it's 2700 for one person. If you're over the age of 60, it's like $4,500. Right. Um, so like I said, if you have a small pension, Social Security, you own your house, and you, don't, you're, you still qualify for SNAP right now, you won't qualify for SNAP going forward. Yeah. Any other questions or comments for Martin? Thanks so yeah. much for what you do, but appreciate the update today. I was going to say some good information you shared, so thank you. Um, can you share what the budgeting process for nonprofits is this year, if I may ask that question, or do you want to follow up later? That's fine, too. Well, I think that's probably going to be an item we haven't got to yet. Like I okay. said, we're kind of going through the budget process now, and as we did last year, you know, we discussed it and then allocated some funding for it going forward. So I know the application process hasn't been posted to the site, so we could let you know that as soon as we do make that decision in budget, I would think. Sounds great. Thank you very much. appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Barb. Moving on to item five, receive project updates from department heads and elected officials. 
Good morning, Board. Kathy Nicholas, County Engineer. Good morning. A brief update on the roads. The paved roads are in pretty good condition. We do expect them to be in better condition tomorrow after we get a, a bit of, of warmer weather. It should be completely clear by tomorrow afternoon. Uh, the motor graders are out on the, the gravel road system plowing back the snow. Uh, the, we do have several trucks running to the, the sand quarry here in Waterloo, refilling up the sand at Longfellow and then uh, mixing that with the salt and distributing that to our elk run and our Laporte shops uh, to keep them in good supply. Can I answer any questions at this time? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Any department heads, elected officials? All right. Hearing none, we'll move on to the minutes being approved for January 24th and January 26th, which were budget sessions, and January 26th afternoon work session on the county EMA levy. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. No. Minutes are approved. There are, um, there, I was going to say it says hearings, but there is one hearing later for a rezone request by John Morgan. Consent agenda. The following items will be acted upon by a single resolution. I move. Second. Been moved and seconded. Are there any items anyone wishes to remove or discuss? Hearing none, please answer as your name is called. Little? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Velka? Yes. Hall? Yes. Leyland? Yes. Item 9, contracts and agreements. Resolution that the lowest reasonable bid received from Tyler Technologies, Dallas, Texas, for ARPA project PH-1IT, I'm sorry, 05, for an electronic timekeeping system with a bid of $44,413 be approved as recommended by Al Yu, Information Technology Director. Morning, Board. Al, you IT Director. Um, yes, we formed a small committee to um, go over multiple bids, and I want to commend our committee of Billy, Allison, and Michelle. They did a great job vetting all the, all the products and a very, very thorough job. So um, we did provide a scoring matrix, um, and our recommendation is to go with Tyler Technologies product called time and attendance, and this will serve as the new electronic timesheet. Um, can I answer any questions for you guys? Al, have we been associated with Tyler in the past? Um, that name sounds familiar. They, they run, they, uh, our, our ERP finance system is, is uh, ran by Tyler, so New World. New World and okay. also Encode, which runs our uh, tax software. Okay. For Thank you. Thank you. Move to approve. Second. Moved and seconded. If there are no further questions, please answer as your name is called. Short? Yes. Trailka? Yes. Hall? Yes. Little? Yes. Aylin? Yes. Item B, discussion on Cedar Bend Humane Society contract. Linda, I put that on there. If you recall, it's been a year since uh, we talked about it. It's been a three-year contract, usually with about a 3% increase. Um, there were some questions about it, um, and the board at that time decided to just go with a year. I'm assuming that year is coming up again in June. So the question is, does the board want to do anything or just keep rolling it over? Okay. Floor is open for any discussion or comments. I'm not sure. Are there any new requests for what they'd want, people would want in the contract? I know when they were here. I, well, go ahead, Tom. I tried to call her the other day, and uh, it's it's hard to get through to her. And um, I left a message. Uh, basically, I wanted to check exactly what you were saying, Chris, whether they were prepared to give us another agreement or what the particulars were, and um, just can't get through to her. Did we? Did, you said you tried calling. Did we do an email by any chance? I was going to say, would that be any help to see if they could have her come and make a presentation or at least have her come to the board meeting? Um, I think we could send an email. Um, if I recall, I thought we requested her to come anyway and give a presentation to the board last year. I don't believe she's been here. So Yeah, we did. I don't remember, like I say, if we gave a timeline or anything. So, yeah, 
we can try to follow I, up with too. I encourage the board to, if you get a chance, um, I worked with Mark Kerbs for the sheriffs on this a couple of years ago because they had quite a few concerns uh, because it basically uh, talks about what we have to do after hours. So I encourage you to talk to him about it. And that's really why I started um, getting into this with the um, contract. Uh, basically, we're paying, I think, about $2,100, $2,200 a month. And um, really for nothing, in my opinion. No, and I think that is something, like I said, we probably talked at that time that's something we needed to reconsider or reevaluate. So this is good that if it's coming up in June, gives us some time to do that. So appreciate one, that. one thing that I looked when I went over the list was there's quite a quite a few of them on their different locations. One example is in Independence Avenue, right outside the city limits. Um, there's an individual that fed cats all summer to the tune of about 12 or 14 of them. Uh, this individual went south in the winter and turned them all into the main society and the county paid for them for a two week quarantine for each one. And that's not the only one that the list shows about three or four of them throughout the county. I think that was the majority of the calls too. Was it not really cats that I think they were picking up? I can't trying to remember, but, but okay. our contract doesn't cover anything after hours. We pay for everything above and beyond mm -hmm. plus the sheriff department has to go and, and take the animal out there themselves, unlock the door and put the animal away. Yeah. Maybe just a question about general process, mm -hmm. right? We've got food bank, um, you know, wanting to understand our budget process. I know Michelle said that as we get through this, maybe, maybe it is a conversation with some of these outside contracts that we've got for services that it would tend to make some sense to set a, a, a work session inform them of that work session through email or mm -hmm. a letter or phone calls, whatever, um, so that we can get some of those answers, some of those questions answered, Tom, because, yeah, it sounds like the lack of communication um, isn't just a one-time thing. It sounds like there's been some issues here in, in the past from both sides, right? We've, we've got entities that are looking for some answers and some timelines mm -hmm. and, and us looking for some answers on some questions, so maybe just setting some of those work sessions mm -hmm. far enough in advance that they can adjust their schedules and get here. Well, I think we found last year because of the change in process yeah. is why we changed things and, and we went ahead and, and discussed an allocation and what we thought was an approximate number that we could do and still have an application process going forward. Mm -hmm. And that allowed us to do that because yes, to be fair to everyone that wanted to apply, definitely. But, yeah, yeah, this particular is, is not a nonprofit. This is, um, separate contract that the county has it's it's not a it's not yeah. considered in our nonprofits no so we could just ask her kind of to answer your question we could have her attend a meeting and mm -hmm. go forward on that no. so that'd be great be helpful thank you thanks tom anything else on that item no move on to item c discussion possible board action on the wind street wind stream contract options Mr. Gebbing. Good morning, board. Rory Gibbing, maintenance superintendent. Good morning. Um, as most of you are aware, uh, with our phone service uh, dating back to uh, October, uh, we have been uh, working uh, closely with uh, Windstream, our current uh, provider, and uh, uh, as well as the uh, Iowa Utility Board. Um, unfortunately, back in October, uh, Blackhawk County facilities were put on a, a decommission list, um, stating that uh, our infrastructure to our facilities has uh, hit the end of its useful life. And so uh, we got put into that category. In fact, we were uh, decommissioned twice. Uh, starting in October um, and then once again I believe uh, uh, probably about a month after that and so during that time uh, we worked very closely uh, like I had mentioned with the uh, Iowa Utility Board to uh, gain contact to uh, Windstream uh, to find a remedy uh, to the situation and uh, here in uh, probably about the last month, uh, we were uh, contacted by um, 
wind streams, uh, they call them the SLED group. It's uh, state, local, and education uh, department. Uh, we've been working very closely with the team there uh, to, uh, one, look at a solution for us, uh, for our facilities uh, to continue service, and secondly, uh, to keep us off of that decommission list. Um, so far, obviously, they've been able to keep us off of that list, but uh, we are at a point uh, where uh, they have presented us three different options, three different contracts. Um, same contract, just different term limits. Um, and so just to kind of give you a rundown of what the solution involves is essentially um, putting us on a, uh, like a cloud-based management type system. So they would have a, uh, it'd be, uh, we'd still keep our infrastructure internally, so our phone systems uh, would, you would see no change there. Uh, but how we get service uh, would, would change. It would no longer be a legacy type phone system. So it would be broadband uh, and, and provided by Windstream and uh, their routers and, and modems, whatever it takes to get us onto that service. We sent to you both, all three of the, the contracts. The language in the contract is all the same um, with the exception of the term limits. Um, so I don't know if you've had a, a chance to look through that, if you have any questions, but um, uh, we are, I know this is a, a discussion possible board action, um, and this really uh, is, is kind of a phase one uh, to a two-phase project. As you remember, uh, for ARP, uh, ARPA, uh, we had a uh, proposal to go to SIP uh, phone services. Um, here just recently, uh, Windstream has provided us their solution for that, um, and uh, we work closely with the uh, IT team, uh, several different meetings with them, and uh, I think it's safe to say that we were all very impressed with the system that they presented to us. Um, so by, by going with uh, this first phase and getting our service locked in, and getting us off of that decommission list then sets us up for the future, for the, uh, the next phase, which would then get us into a uh, SIP uh, service. Um, with that, you get uh, the uh, more resilient uh, type of service. You can tie in other facilities that the county has, such as conservation, secondary roads. Uh, you could put everything under one umbrella. And that's really one of the goals that we're looking at uh, is tying all of our services in. Uh, it gives us the ability to use soft phones. Uh, you can still use your handsets, but you can also use a soft phone on the computer. Uh, it gives the user a lot more uh, uh, functionality as far as uh, making changes, developing hunt groups. Uh, one example that we talked about <coughs> Uh, would be uh, the health department uh, when they set up the contact tracing they put in several uh, phone sets in there for that uh, with this phase two part of this project um, that would be very uh, an easy task to do uh, for uh, each department to kind of manage themselves so again that's phase two that'll be coming uh, uh, down the road but this first phase really is just looking at uh, making our service more reliable getting us off of that decommission list and um, allowing us to move forward to look at these other uh, opportunities that uh, or options that Windstream offers um, so as we look through we were originally looking at the uh, one-year term um, and the reason we did that is because we just wanted to allow ourselves to um, uh, not make such a commitment because at that time we weren't really sure what they had to offer for this phase two uh, process. <clears throat> Once we went through that uh, and uh, we were all quite impressed with what they had to offer, we felt it was very simple. Uh, I think uh, IT would agree. Now we're, now we're looking harder at the three-year, and that's what our recommendation today would be for the board is to sign the three-year uh, to lock us in. Uh, at that rate that is very similar to what we're paying now. I think uh, looking at that, we're about, uh, uh, current uh, rate is at 32.40. Uh, the new solution would be 39.52. So that does equate to about $8,500 a year, uh, but compared to the two year and the one year, uh, it is significantly cheaper. 
Um, so that's our recommendation, uh, recommendation today is to uh, 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 sign that uh, three-year lease or three-year agreement with Windstream, allow us to keep moving forward with the other services that they provide, um, and uh, just lock us in for a long term. Any is questions? this cost for phase one only? This is, yeah, what I'm proposing for today is the phase one uh, part of this project, and that is just the service coming to our facility. So functionality-wise, uh, you know, we're not going to see any changes. <clears throat> we're just going to have more resilient uh, service, more reliable service, um, and get us off of that decommission list. So it'll cost then for phase two, we'll have an additional cost. We'll have, uh, and if you recall, we already had presented a ARP application uh, for that. Um, and uh, I believe we had a not to exceed 100,000 for that second phase. Um, one of the nice things I do want to mention with going with Windstream is our existing, uh, our existing equipment uh, that we currently have with our IP phone sets can be utilized under that process. Now there's other services out there uh, that, that don't allow you to do that, so then you would be forced into buying uh, new handsets. And so we're hopeful uh, once we get that tidied up on that phase two that we're actually going to see that uh, come back at a, a much lesser cost. Did you say we do cover conservation? Uh, right now we do not, but um, as we move into to phase two of this, that is our goal is to get uh, all of our uh, shops, uh, conservation, secondary roads uh, under one service. Yeah, I called out there yesterday three times. I could hear her, but she couldn't hear me. Yep. So obviously the phones weren't working. Yeah. So in this proposal, there are new things that we have that we're not having now. You've kind of reviewed some of those. For correct? the uh, for what what the asking for today is is really just uh, we're not going to necessarily see uh, any. Um, uh, any new bells and whistles on our phone system. This just uh, um, uh, gets our service to our facility, gets us off of that decommission list. It's, it, it, we may, we're, we're hopeful that we're gonna see more reliability because it's gonna be broadband and, and uh, it's not gonna be relied on the old legacy uh, phone system coming to our facilities, which is what uh, Windstream is decommissioning. Um, so everybody's gonna essentially be going to this, um, unfortunately, uh, we uh, were notified back in April that went unnoticed once we hit October uh, we had we we got decommissioned and so it took a lot of a uh, lot of effort on everybody's part to uh, get us uh, off of that list and allow us some time uh, to figure out a solution to this um, we had some pretty serious interruptions of service at that mm -hmm. time yeah. as we recall yeah so that's great and, and this cost increase, like you said, if we do the three-year option, it looks like it's about $700 more. Yes. Yeah. I Otherwise, think. there was considerable, mm -hmm. I said, to the 5700 and 6800 yeah. so. I do like that if, if we do move forward with phase two, this route that the current headsets are, or phone sets are usable because those aren't very old. Yeah, it, there's, there's a lot of great benefits uh, in that phase two, um, as we learned, as we just recently learned. Um, you know the user uh, user friendly uh, very user friendly um, one one showing and I, I picked it up so <laughs> that says a lot <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about the, the concerns about kind of the all call notification that is a, a part of this phase too um, in fact we've been talking a great deal about that what we're looking at what we're hopeful is to be able to incorporate our phone sets into that all call. So right now, as it sets, we have speakers in the hallway. Mm -hmm. And uh, what happens is, you know, you have people in individual offices, it's very hear hard to hear that. So um, that is something that we uh, committed to back uh, during the ARPA discussions and the SIP, is that uh, mass notification is a, a, a top priority uh, for this phase two. Okay. And I wanted to tell the board, we had discussed earlier about just having this as a discussion item mm -hmm. and not having the possible board action in case the board wanted more time to speak with Rory or to review the options, but um, decided to just put it on to if, if the board was so moved to 
want to take action on it today. So, it's the pleasure of the board. I'm, I'm okay to move forward today. As am I. You are? Yeah. Yep. Tom, Dan? Me too. I'm yeah. good. Yeah, that's fine. All right. All right. I'll. I'll offer a motion for the for the three year um, contract. Thank you. Second. Then moved and seconded. If there are no further questions, please answer as your name is called. Trelka. Yes. Hall. Yes. Little. Yes. Schwartz. Yes. Leyland. Yes. <clears throat> Item 10, other business. Discussion with prospective consulting partners, LLC, regarding the implementation and transition plan for the county's third party administrator for health coverage due to the acquisition of preferred one by United Healthcare. Good morning. Good morning. Amanda Fezemeyer, HR Director. So um, I would like to introduce our uh, benefit consultant, Stacy Wandershade. She's on the uh, call right now via Zoom. Um, she's here to talk with you all. Um, last week, I had given you some information about the notice that we received um, that our current health insurance plan provided by Preferred One uh, is uh, has been acquired, and uh, therefore we are preparing for a transition to UMR, which is a third-party administrator owned by United Healthcare. So um, it's purely discussion. Um, it's uh, an opportunity for you guys to ask some questions to learn some more as to how we're going to. Uh, handle this. Uh, it's going to heavily involve the finance director, the HR office, as well as our auditor's office, who um, manages that self-insurance fund, as well as the claims and payments for the self-insurance that we have, or for the health insurance that we have. And then, of course, making sure that employees um, understand what is happening and how we're able to retain what we had with Preferred One going forward with United Health and kind of future outlook with that. So. I'm going to turn it over to Stacy, and uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask um, at any point, and I'll let her kind of carry the rest of this conversation. So, thank, thank you. you. Thanks very much. Good morning, Stacey. Good morning, board. board um, Stacy Wondershide with Perspective Consulting Partners in Urbandale, Iowa. Um, I just wanted to make myself available today to answer any questions that the board might have. Um, you know, we were. Um, notified. Um, I was notified of uh, this change uh, taking place uh, effective for 7-1 on January 18th. Um, I think that, um, you know, part, um, well, I asked them if we could delay it by a year to afford us time uh, to plan and to also potentially go out to the market and look at other third party administrator options. Um, you guys know from history, or at least some of the board members know from long history, that I um, would much rather um, the board and the county be able to make a decision on a third party administrator um, based on your own needs and terms rather than um, an implementation or a transition being um, planned for you. So that was of concern. Um, they indicated that wasn't an option, um, that they wanted to be able to uh, shut down their um, preferred one system um, a year from now. So they, you know, need to transition cases um, now. Stacy, could you elaborate a little bit more on what that means for us going forward or what those steps are that will need to be taken? Yeah. So essentially what it means is, you know, preferred one is the third party administrator who processes the medical plan claims, uh, answers the customer service phone calls, um, you know, distributes identification cards, um, really all that has to do with the medical uh, claims. Um, so that is shutting down um, that acquisition um, of preferred one by United Healthcare. Um, United Healthcare has their own third party administrator called UMR, and they want to transition um, everything over to their uh, UMR uh, platform and then shut down that preferred one system. So um, the what it will mean for employees are new identification cards. It'll be, um, you know, uh, potentially a new 800 number to call uh, with questions about claims. 
uh, EOBs will have um, UMR's logo on it instead of um, preferred ones. Um, so all of these employees that are of uh, preferred one today are going to be employees of UMR uh, going forward. Um, as for the transition, uh, there, there is a time commitment, um, which is not insignificant, uh, that Amanda uh, briefly outlined um, here earlier. But, you know, as with any kind of transition, we're really kind of starting um, you know, starting uh, fresh to make sure that everything is set up um, appropriately. So um, the benefits will transfer over as they are today. And um, there will be um, audit measures in place at um, UMR to ensure that that transition was um, correct. Um, although it does require um, my involvement as well as um, the team at uh, the county, um, specifically benefits and HR to review uh, the benefits. Um, it'll consist of probably three or four um, conference calls, one to address banking and billing, uh, one to um, address eligibility and enrollment, and another to uh, look at the claims and make certain that those benefits um, have been interpreted appropriately uh, for that transition from preferred one to UMR. So, um, you know, there is a, there is a time commitment, um, in order to ensure that the transition is smooth. Right. I just like to go on the record and say unequivocally that I believe United Healthcare is an untrustworthy, unscrupulous company. This county had to sue, threaten to sue them for half a million dollars to get reimbursements that they were trying to screw us out of at a country view. I am not comfortable with entrusting the health care of our employees to this awful corporation. This is baloney. I, I, I do want to um, just uh, um, make one uh, delineation here. Um, the county's plan is self-funded, so it is your money that funds the actual claims, and then there's reinsurance purchased in order to protect uh, the county from any catastrophic claims. Uh, UMR, which is owned by United Healthcare, is truly a third party administrator. So they will, um, you know, act on behalf of your plan to process claims according to the way your plan is written. I'm not so, buying it. United Healthcare was one of the MCOs in the state screwing providers over and screwing patients over, denying care and denying coverage. Their business model is to make money by screwing providers over by delaying paying. We can. I do not trust these people. This is this is whole. Okay. This is not okay. I, I our, our, we pride ourselves on good health care coverage for our employees. We do not want this crap corporation involved. I'm correct. We had to sue them for half a million dollars. Mike Trinan got it back for us. This is harsh shit. I'm sorry. We didn't. We didn't have to sue them, but we had to threaten suit. They tried to sell for. Like what, one hundred forty-four thousand when the oldest over half a million, something like that. I don't remember the exact numbers, but it was right around half a million dollars. I, I do just. Um, I can. I want to say one more thing about the way the plan is structured. Um, the fact that you're self-funded, and UMR is just acting on your behalf. They uh, United Healthcare is an insurance company, and so if they don't pay a claim, that saves them money out of their pocket. Whereas here. With UMR, if a claim is not paid, it saves the county. It's not saving them. So they're acting on your behalf. And so if your claims are payable and, um, you know, determined by your plan design, then those will be um, those will be processed. Now, having heard your concern, we're sitting at the end of January. Um, we could look at doing a an RFP and look at other third party administrators and that will be um you know an additional um you know that will take additional time and resources um to get uh, normally i would want to be doing an rfp at the beginning of december for a 7-1 renewal so that a decision could be made um in march and then implementation could take place uh, April, May, June, so that employees have identification cards by um, by July 1. But 
I mean, if this is something that the county is um, interested in doing and adamant about not being aligned in any form or fashion with United Healthcare, that's something that um, you know that we could uh, orchestrate. It's just, it's just not the ideal uh, timing, which is not your fault, not my fault. Um, uh, you know, we, so Stacey, is it true we have one year left? It, it preferred the, when it stayed, right? I think um, your your fees are not going to change. The admin fees that are with preferred one, um, they're going to honor those through the end of your contract term with them, which is six thirty of twenty five. Okay, so it's two years left. Yeah, for the fees. Okay. But I mean, if if it is the the um, the preference. Uh, for the county, you know, we can move forward with a with a formal RFP process. And that seems like that would be an item for discussion, obviously, for right. discussion and yeah. vote or action at, at some point in time, if that's the case. I was going to say this is discussion only, um, sure. obviously. Yeah. What's all involved, I guess, and how it impacts our employees, I, I think, is critical. But Right, and I think that's... Um, you know, uh, with uh, Stacy's experience and other clients, uh, the main thing is to make this a smooth transition. Whether that's through an RFP, whether that's through uh, at one, we, it's really just the opportunity to recognize that this is changing, um, and it was an acquisition, um, you know, outside of our control. Um, however, um, you know, we certainly could come back uh, with what a timeline for an RFP would look like and what that would be in accordance with the agreement that we have with uh, prospective consultants. Um, but yeah, I mean, the timeline isn't exactly ideal, mm -hmm. but certainly something we could explore. I think at this point you're looking at, um, if we don't do the RFP, we have a plan in place. Uh, Stacey has definitely provided a plan for us to make this transition uh, with the third party administrator um, to, uh, you know, reinforce that we want to keep what we've already negotiated with um, the existing networks and the existing providers and the fees and everything um, to ensure that is a, a smooth transition for employees so that they aren't feeling like, um, you know, I was going to my doctor in last month and now it changed July 1 and I can't go to that doctor anymore. So that's really important to us to continue that the care for the employees and their dependents is received um, and that the UMR is aligned to what our um, our uh, articles that we put out there um, in the, the SPDs um, that we have in place right now. So would you like us to come back? Stacy, um, Tim, um, Michelle and I could have a brief meeting to talk about what an RFP looks like. Uh, we could certainly come back next week, possibly, if it works for schedules. Um, is that something that we'd like to have we we haven't always had preferred one, Amanda. Didn't we bid that out? Yes. It so, was, or go ahead, Stacy. Yeah, you know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Um, so um, the county has been with preferred one uh, since 2014, and you might remember, Tom, <laughs> that um, it was when um, the third party administrator you were with was getting shut down. And um, so we went out to the market and looked at several options um, at that time and then ended up with a uh, preferred one. But it was a pretty detailed process. And I think maybe, I don't know if Tom, I think maybe you were part of that process. Yes, I was. Okay, yeah. So um, you might remember that we had meetings um, and finalist meetings and um, you know invited them in to kind of present on services and so forth. So. Um, you know, we could look at a scaled down version of that process, um, you know, given the kind of short uh, timeline here that we have uh, to work with. Um, so we could, you know, look at an adjusted RFP process uh, to kind of uh, shortcut it and accommodate um, the glide path to implementation for 7-1. Would there be a cost involved with an RFP? Yes, um, our uh, agreement with the county um, has uh, pricing for um, RFPs and implementations included. I mean, I guess I would like discussion to at least know 
the viability of going through an RFP. Um, but I certainly would not go with this again next year. I mean, they, you know, their their actions, you know, cost people their lives in the state. Their actions cause providers to close down, and I'm not comfortable with you know a, a penny of of our taxpayer dollars going to them, and I'm not comfortable with trusting them to be involved in any aspect of the health care of our employees. They've shown that they cannot be trusted. We had to threaten them with lawsuit. I mean, how many how many businesses do we enter in contracts with that we had to take to all threaten to take to court for half a million dollars? So we can definitely look at the viability of that. Um, you know, I think we want to do a little bit of a cost benefit analysis. Um, I want to make sure even going out to RFP that we're able to retain, you know, that is one of our biggest strengths there at the county with our workforce is that we have very strong benefits. Our network includes Mayo Clinic and includes Iowa City. I mean, it's, it's um, and many of our employees would attest to how strong these benefits are and that fit their needs as well as uh, the needs of their family. So, um, but it, that would just be one thing um, to uh, just to look at that as to the viability of the timeline as well as, you know, can we get everything that we currently have even through the RFP? And, um, and this being not been done since 2014, it's not like it's a, you know, bad opportunity to look at that. It's just the timing is a little constrained. So, but I agree if we look at something as to where we're moving to UMR, the RFP is not a, a desirable option at this time, uh, then I would definitely recommend that we plan on doing it for the next fiscal year, or I'm sorry, in fiscal year 24. So. And Stacy can certainly, she'll support that, you know, and work with us through that process. Um, I, I don't know on the other end of that is with the time, our own time constraints, does that also limit possible vendors that would bid on this too? I don't know. So those are things that we can discuss and um, bring back to the board. Do you think a week's enough time or to do that or? Stacy, do you think a week's enough time or would you prefer two weeks? I, I think we have to act quickly. Okay. Um, if, if there's a potential for going out to RFP, we have to act quickly so that we can get it out. Okay. Great. So we'll plan on next week. Next week. Okay. Sounds good. And that'll be a discussion board action um, based on the information that we received. Thank you for, that sound good? That'd be great. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions or comments for oh. Stacy or, okay. Dan, Tom, any other questions or comments? No, I'm fine. Okay. I'm good. All right, thank you. We'll thank move you. on to item B, motion to approve the updated eminent domain commission list for 2023. Come on. Second. Thank you. We'll say it's moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. Same aye. Sign. Opposed, same sign. Motion is carried. Item C, motion to approve the updated various committees list. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank Debbie for that work. I think those are lists that hadn't been updated in quite a while. <laughs> Item D, motion to appoint Supervisor Hall, Supervisor Schwartz, and Finance Director Michelle Weidner to a committee with Sheriff Thompson to study long-term health care plans for the jail and to start the planning process for a request for proposal for health care services for the jail as the current contract for services will expire January 31st, 2024. And this was just put on formalizing, I think, that action that was talked about and included in a previous um, item last week. So if that... Okay. So moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Just a, a quick follow-up to this, just so we got an idea on the timeline here. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Assuming that we, if the intent after this contract ending the end of January 2024, mm -hmm. the intent is then to go to RFP. Uh, if, if Sheriff Thompson can speak to, are we prepared to internally create that RFP or are we going to have to go out for bid and then what is that process Sorry. to craft the RFP for the RFP. Good morning, board. Mm -hmm. um, no, no, that's a great question. So uh, if you recall a couple emails ago regarding this topic, I gave you kind of a timeline. And the timeline is uh, pursuant to our lack of 
credibility in developing a standardized RFP for the richness or robustness of what we are going to ask for. So the reality is if we are marching down the road of looking at an RFP, uh, that's probably something that the subcommittee needs to look at in parallel with some of that localized option, right? So we're going to have to look at two things at the same time because really um, if we're going to go RFP, we probably need to RFP for a consultant pretty early on because we're about six months-ish for uh, consultancy, RFP development, vetting, and, and contracting. So yeah, that year is a very tight window to be able to do something to get a new company onboarded. Um, in fact, we may have to entertain some sort of month to month after January. There's probably not enough time if we go to RFP. That's probably true also uh, for local mm -hmm. partnerships too. Yeah. But um, we've already started some of that initial rollout uh, in conversation. <clears throat> Between now and March, again, we're going to try and get you all through budget um, before we start in earnest with subcommittee meetings. Um, that way you can get that off your plate. But in the meantime, we will have had some conversations with People's Clinic, with Public Health, with uh, some of those players to uh, Blackhawk Gurney Mental Health, some of those other folks, so that we will at least, at least have some initial dialogue that we can start digesting as a subcommittee um, uh, between then and now. But okay. you're right, the timing is, is pretty tight. So we're looking probably into July. Or we we to need to, to, to in have, order to, to have for us to know if we're going to have to go to RFP in order to have the RFP crafted for service. I, I would agree probably, probably before July. that. Okay. I think I think we probably got a couple month window okay. um, to to have uh, some direction back to the board uh, for guidance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I appreciate like say the two of you being willing to serve with Sheriff Thompson and Michelle also. So thank you. Moves it along. Anything else? Any comments or questions? Uh -huh. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Motion to direct the county auditor to advertise for a public hearing to be held at 9.05 on Tuesday, February 14th at the Blackhawk County Courthouse on the proposed ordinance number 77-276 from a request submitted by Dr. Brad Boswell to rezone four acres from agricultural district to agricultural residential district to construct two new single family homes at east of 6225 Ford Road. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. This is just for an advertising for public hearings. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item F, motion to direct the county auditor to advertise for a public hearing to be held at 9.07 on Tuesday, February 7th in the Blackhawk County Courthouse on the proposed Blackhawk County Jail Lobby remodel project. So moved. Second. Then moved and seconded. So again, for advertising for the hearing. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item G. Resolution that the minor plat of survey submitted by Michelle Bond <coughs> to plat 1.51 acres in order to construct a new single family home north of 5334 Big Woods Road, legally described as below, and if approved, that the county auditor be directed to certify a copy of this resolution for the Blackhawk County Recorder. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion or questions? Seth? You please. Okay, yeah, uh, this was a request that was submitted by Michelle Blonde to uh, plot 1.51 acres in order to construct a new single family home at north of 5334 Big Woods Road. Um, uh, it was moved by uh, Bozier and second by Nagel to approve the request by Michelle Blonde uh, to uh, plot 1.51 acres in order to construct a new single family home at north of 5334 Big Woods Road. Uh, the request was unanimously approved. Uh, the 1.51 acres in question is located north of 5334 Big Woods Roads, which is approximately 1,850 feet north of the Duckerton Road and Big Woods Road intersection. The one parcel containing the 1.51 acres for the proposed plat area has been zoned to agricultural dist 
uh, district since the adoption of the zoning warrants in 1982. Planning and Zoning uh, Commission unanimously recommended approval to rezone 1.51 acres from a agricultural district to AR agricultural residential district at the regular meeting on December 20th, 2022. And uh, the, uh, the request did go before the Board of Supervisors on January 24, 2023. Um, and uh, the uh, rezone was approved and the minor plat request is, is going before you folks today. Um, the surrounding uh, plat area consists of agricultural lands with some rural homes in the zoned agricultural district in AR agricultural residential district to the north. Land of the south is zoned agricultural district, AL agricultural limited district, and the city of Cedar Falls. Land of the east is zoned agricultural district, AL agricultural limited district, and AR agricultural residential district. Land of the west is zoned agricultural district, and CM commercial manufacturing district. Minor plat areas designated as agricultural on the future land use map, component of the Black Hawk County Comprehensive Land Use Plan. Land of the north, south, and west is designated as agricultural. Land of the east is designated as parks and open space and residential. Approximately one third of the plat area is located in a special flood hazard area. However, there is adequate amount of land in the rezone area to build a home that is located outside of the 100 year floodplain and will meet setbacks for Black Hawk County. Uh, but Clint wishes to plant 1.51 acres in order to construct a single family home. The parcel is large enough to accommodate one developed lot that will meet the lot and size requirements for the AR by being greater than 1.5 acres and wider than 150 feet. Uh, the uh, Planning and Zoning uh, Commission approved the request at the regular meeting on uh, January 17th, 2023. Great, thank you. Zeph, this is basically, the board approved this already, correct? Uh, that, that they uh, they approve the rezone, but uh, this is the first time the minor plats coming before you folks for. But is it isn't the plat over the years? The plat's just the formality for the board. Is that correct? Because we I, already. Approved I it? yes yes I I I believe yep. Yeah, that that is correct, sir. Kind of the next step in the process. Correct. <laughs> is this the last step in the process, or we're going to have to force them to come back again? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this will this will be the last step. Okay. <laughs> Not that the civics lesson is boring or anything, but you know. Yeah. Oh sure. <laughs> Matter of business. Yeah. Great. <laughs> All right. Any other questions, comments? I'll make a motion to approve. It's already been moved. Oh. Yes, this one has. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. I was going to say, please answer as your name is called. Hall. Yes. Little. Yes. Schwartz. Yes. Chalka. Yes. Valen. Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay, the time is 9.56, and we are entering the hearing on proposed ordinance number 77-275, the Morgan Rezone. All right, motion receive in place and file, proof of publication of notice of public Second. Hearing. Been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Same sign. Motion's carried. Motion to waive the first reading as noticed by Don't published. Move. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item three, motion to close the hearing as oral and written comments are received and placed on file. So moved. Second. Mr. Beter, was there any written comments provided? Okay. Thank you. All right, Seth, thank you. Okay, yeah, the Planning and Zoning Commission at the regular meeting on December 20th, 2022, reviewed the request by John Morgan on behalf of Monarch Farms LLC to rezone 1.51 acres from an agricultural district to C commercial district in order to construct a 41 by 44, 1,804 square feet store restaurant, which will feature on site and locally grown produce and host weddings and other special events. Um, it was moved by uh, Brundette and seconded by shares to approve the request by John Morgan on behalf of Morgan Farms LLC to rezone 1.51 acres from May Agricultural District to C Commercial District in order to construct a 41 by 44, 1,840 square foot store restaurant, which will feature on site locally grown produce at 530 East Eagle Road with the following conditions. One, the use for the building will be limited to a restaurant, including but not limited to um, farm to table uh, agricultural experience. Hours of operation will be limited from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. seven days a week. Uh, three, the use of the uh, restaurant facility shall allow for small gatherings and four, allow for indoor weddings within the restaurant facility, uh, but shall not allow for outdoor weddings or similar gatherings unless it involves field trips to the orchard for farm or produce. Uh, the request was approved five to one with uh, Nagel denying the request. 
Um, the uh, surrounding area consists of agricultural lands with some rural homes in the zone, the agricultural district to the north, south, and east. Uh, Eagle Center, which is 2,100 feet to the west, uh, has land that is owned agricultural district, AL agricultural limit district, AR agricultural residential district, RS residential suburban district, C commercial district, and CM commercial manufacturing district. Region areas designated as agricultural in the future land use map, owner of the Blackhawk County comprehensive land use plan, surrounding areas designated as agriculture to the north, south, and east, land of the west is designated as parks and open space and residential. Uh, none of the region areas located in a special flood, uh, flood hazard area. Uh, the applicant wishes to rezone 1.51 acres from uh, uh, agricultural to commercial in order to construct a 41 by 44 store restaurant, which will feature on site and locally grown produce and all small weddings and other events. The parcel is large enough to accommodate one developable lot that will meet the size and the lot requirements of the C commercial district by being greater than 0 0.172 acres in size and wider than 150 feet. Uh, the uh, property main parcel had a lease score of 262, which is considered high agricultural value site. The zoning order notes that land uh, that is classified as having high agricultural value should be strongly discouraged for development in almost every case. It also states that in general, these sites are reserved for agricultural activities and protected from urban development or urban use encroachment. However, the ordinance also states that under very unique circumstances are these sites to be developed only after compelling evidence is provided. Zoning ordinances list several criteria. Um, areas not been a row cup or active row crop production or in CRP for the previous 15 years. There is not conducive to production by size and parcel shape. Areas compatible with surrounding uses by uh, reason of similar adjacent uses. Meeting any one of these criteria should not constitute approval. However, each request is viewed um, differently. Uh, the, uh, the land currently consists of uh, orchard trees and pasture. Um, it's not in farm production. Uh, the, uh, Technical Review Committee noted the high lease score of 262 for the rezone area. Uh, noted the rezone area contains uh, orchard trees and local produce that will be grown on site, uh, will be uh, considered an agricultural activity. The restaurant store building will be taking up 1,804 square feet of space along with less than one quarter of an acre for parking. Uh, Kelly Amador wanted to ensure their septic system is large enough for the site because uh, a lot of water may be required to uh, used to wash produce, uh, the applicant, uh, Blackout Kenny Engineering, has already approved the entrances that will come off of East Eagle Road. And that is the, the request. Um, a, a conditions agreement was signed. Um, this, these conditions were basically created by working with the neighbors. They worked with the Planning and Zoning Commissioners to come up with these um, to, you know, uh, give Mr. Morgan a potential opportunity, but, you know, they were kind of concerned about, you know, having, like, weddings last until 11 at night because they live right next door. Um, so that's why we came up with these conditions, and these conditions directly came from the neighbors and the Planning and Zoning Commissioners and were later incorporated into the final motion. And as I said before, conditions to zoning uh, agreement has been signed by Mr. Morgan to address these issues that the neighbors had. I was going to ask if there'd been anyone that had protested or showed up at the I, I believe meeting we, at all. I believe we do have some neighbors here that, that would be more than happy to discuss. <laughs> oh, okay. Great. Thank you. How about the how about the applicant? Is the applicant available too? Okay, super. So we can have both. So who would like to begin? I was going to say, do you want to, yeah, I was going to say step up and talk about the project if you'd like, or I was going to say Seth gets a commended for all, reading all that as quickly as it did. I was say, <laughs> Need I a bottle of water? I don't, I don't yeah. know if I could have done that. Yeah. It's a <laughs> little you. like listening to Paul Harvey. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> Thank you. If you'd just please give your name and address when you uh, uh, any comments. My name is John Morgan. We are at 530 East Eagle Road. This is a different one. Oh, whoops. I have a different one. I apologize. That's, That's the previous. Uh, yeah. There we got it. So, right, thank you. So the idea is to just put a small storefront. The, a lot of that square footage will be a porch. Actually, it's, it's just going to be a very small building in order to uh, basically to this will allow me to prepare and cut foods on site, which is where I wouldn't be able to if it wasn't zone commercial. You know, um, the idea is to put a small delicatessen in there with you walk in and see um, a number of baked goods. Um, very nicely crafted um, paninis, salads, things like that from the property, produced on the property, and local um, surrounding ones as well, such as um, like Family Fresh Marketplace and other people like that. Uh, <clears throat> the, the goal is to 
create a, a learning experience for the youth in the Cedar Valley, families, to come out and see where their stuff is actually being produced. If you ask my kids where apples come from, they used to say the back of hy but now they know it's from a tree. You know, these berries come from canes or bushes, um, vines, things like this, and they can put their hands on it and then actually get to taste it in the store where you can cut it into, create it and make it into things basically, ciders, applesauce, things like that where we couldn't do that without the commercial ice kitchen, the stainless steel and approved by the Board of Health, obviously. And then, uh, as far as the concerns, I do have in my business plan uh, budgeted um, a, a fence to keep people and animals far away from my neighbors, plus it would be a whole property in between the storefront and them too, for that people will not be allowed on this whole middle one here. Uh, that's currently where my dad's living. So there'll be a fence there to keep them contained within this red zone. And the, uh, the water issues I've spoke with my plumber about and contractor and they don't seem to be too concerned, but they said it'd have to go through DNR and be approved. You know, everything has to have its checks and levies. And so they don't really have too many concerns um, personally. Um, so like I say, it's just, meant to be a fun opportunity and learning experience for uh, schools, families, and potentially some culinary, uh, like Kirkwood could come by, you know, with a group of people and we could show them our market garden and the apples and things like that. Did the um, health department, did they check with you on the sewage part of it? Whether you have a septic or? Uh, no. I've. I haven't spoke to them about that in particular, but I have had a uh, conversation with me who would be my health inspector, and um, her and I had lengthy conversations about what all will be included there. And then my plumber also is very familiar with this, and like I said, he he said he would have to get every all of his plans approved by the DNR ahead of time. But did they sign off on this project, the health department? Uh, not yet, no. Yeah. Probably at the time when you, I was going to say their sign off is probably at the time you put up the uh, application to them, I guess. Yeah. Right. Yep. Basically, I was trying to get, see if this would go through before we move too much more further or else plans will change. When are you hoping to open by? Just out of curiosity. Uh, hopefully next fall. Okay. It depends on, you know, everything's moving slower than usual and um, a lot of people are busy, the contractors and things like that are. I'm still trying to get a lot of their bids put together and things like that, but the goal is, you know, next fall to be able to. I know that there are um, a number of restaurants in the community that do a great job of incorporating local foods, but I think this would be the first actual farm to table yeah. restaurant in the community. So that's I've been selling to exciting. Uh, Montage, and they're going to have their own little greenhouse where everything in that greenhouse will come go to Montage this year. And I would also you know, be willing to work with the, the gal from the food bank too, a little plot, you know, 10 by 20 plot that, you know, lettuce, tomato, cucumber, all goes to them. They, they've got a program where they accept fresh produce yeah. from growers. So, I mean, I, I'm just um, reaching out to all kinds of people in the community. I've been selling apples to Verve. Um, they did a nice seasonal uh, cinnamon apple this year and last year, so. And they're just first steps for it, right? Yeah. Okay, super. It's a long way to go yet. So. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. To learn and stuff, so. Well, thank you. Any more comments or questions for? Any questions or comments for Mr. Morgan, Tom, or Dan? Nope. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Good morning. Could you just give your name and address? Yep. Yeah. Um, my name is Deb Poland Van Auken. Live right next door to this the, to this quaint little orchard, 602 East Eagle Road. You'll see our house right next door. Um, I am all about farm to table. My family raises sheep on the south side of Waterloo. I help with classes. We take our sheep to classes. I've always been very very supportive of these types of activities. We personally don't believe this is a very compatible use. We live right next door. 
We're both retired. We're there all the time. That's our home. It's half a million dollar home. We moved out to the country to get away from things like this. We love John. We think he's a great guy. We love this great little apple orchard next door. But having a restaurant out in the middle of nowhere doesn't seem to be a very compatible use. I've talked to planning and zoning people who've been on local planning and zoning. They're just appalled that this might go in this, this space. We're just concerned about all the activity. It's a very busy road. There's not a lot of space for parking that could overflow. He was initially talking about weddings, so we did say in the meeting we could tell this was going to move forward. But we just said, you know, we just don't want weddings in the backyard, which is where that came from. And again, we're very supportive. We think this is a great idea. We just don't think it's an appropriate place for it. We just don't, we moved away from the town to get away from things like this in this very quiet area. So although, you know, you'll do what you'll want to do, we just want to voice our concerns that we just don't think this is compatible and will negatively in fact impact the value of our home. Because I've talked to many people that have said, I would never live next door to something like that. So I see that it could impact the value of my home, which is a very big concern to me and the enjoyment of my property because we're outside all the time. But again, we, we love this quaint little orchard next door. We like working around John. We like the openness, no fences and just, you know, be neighbors. That's why we moved to an area like that. So we just want to voice our concerns for that. So were those some of the same, the concerns that when Seth talked about the agreement with Mr. Morgan, it was Yes, we voiced those. those concerns at planning and zoning that we thought it would impact the marketability and enjoyment of our home. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Seth, what other things are in there, like say in the agreement, like say as far as what the neighbor's concerns were, you say were kind of built into the yeah, agreement? Was, uh... Kind of the conditions? Yeah, basically the, the use of the building will be limited to a restaurant, including but not limited to a farm to table agricultural experience. Hours of operation will be limited from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m., seven days a week. Uh, the use for the restaurant facility shall allow for small gatherings and allow for indoor weddings within the restaurant facility, but shall not allow for outdoor weddings or similar gatherings unless it involves field trips to the orchard or to the farm produce. So basically, you'll have, you know, the restaurant, and then there's also the separate orchard, and, you know, um, as well as, you know, the produce that's being created for it. And then also, you know, for other entities, uh, you know, within Blackhawk County. What is projected capacity? We had a motion and a second to close the hearing. Unless there are other discussion questions. All right. All in favor? Just, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yes? I just had one quick one for Seth. Yes. Right. Seth, I, Mr. Morgan, I think, misunderstood my question. Isn't the health department part of the P&Z zoning process when they uh, go through it over there? As far as the uh, uh, septic and so forth? Yeah, that, that, that is handled through the... Uh, through the health department, that is correct. Except and they they reviewed this one prior and signed off. Uh, I I mean, yeah, yeah, I did I did have an opportunity to speak with them. Uh, Kelly Amador was main concern was just that if they're, you know, that um, that they have adequate water and you know septic, if they plan on you know using the water for the vegetables, which they they probably do. So. Her concern was just that they'd have a large enough septic system, an adequate amount of water to address those needs as well. But okay. yes, that is decided through the uh, the, uh, the approval process um, for septic and well in the county does go through Blackhawk County Health Department. But there might be some other things that Mr. Morgan may be referring to as well, other requirements yeah. from other other state entities. But but yes, the the um, the, uh, the septic and the well will have to go through the Blackhawk County Health Department for approval. That is correct, sir. Do they attend the PNZ meeting or is that a separate um, uh, Yeah, process? yeah, the, the, the folks were, were there at, at the meeting and uh, um, I think, yeah, Ms. Mr. Morgan did participate via Zoom. Thank you. Thank you. 
If there are no further comments, I was going to say there's been a motion and a second to close the hearing. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. The meeting is closed. Next item is the resolution to suspend the rules requiring the Board of Supervisors to consider and vote on the proposed ordinance of two prior meetings. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Please answer as your name is called. Little? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Drelka? Yes. Hall? Yes. Leyland? Yes. Item five is a resolution for the ordinance adoption that the ordinance amending ordinance number 36 as amended to the Blackhawk County Iowa Agricultural Preservation Zoning Ordinance adopted February 2nd, 1999 by adding subsection number 275 to section six rezoning certain property as described on the above request submitted by John Morgan and to consider the same for adoption and if adopted would be known as ordinance number 77-275. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Please answer as your name is called. Schwartz? Yes. Chalka? Yes. Hall? Yes. Little? Yes. Leyland? Yes. Thank you. Item 11 is the closed session. We will have a resolution that pursues